Hello everyone and welcome to another session of AP Human Geography with Mr. Elrod. Today we're going to be continuing on in Unit 5, Agriculture and Rural Land Use. Uh, if you'll remember from our last video, we were talking about some of the various reasons for why specific agricultural practices would take place in particular areas. So today we're going to talk a little bit more on that same idea, uh, but talking more specifically theoretically about agricultural practices in relationship to a market area. So today we're going to talk about what's called von, well I guess maybe um, uh, very, uh, not endearingly, but um, anyway, uh, what is discussed as von Thunen's model. Now von Thunen's model is named after the German geographer Heinrich von Thunen, uh, and so basically what he's looking to do is he's looking to theorize and understand and describe why specific agricultural practices are located where they are in relationship to uh, the, the city center, not really city center, but the market area. Now, one thing important that, that's important to note about models in general, uh, models are never 100% accurate, and they never describe 100% accurately the real world. They theorize and they generalize about the real world uh, because you have to create perfect conditions. You have to create assumptions for models. So that's an important thing to know. But, but a lot of times, you know, the with the model and with the theory, they'll help to explain a lot and they'll help to uh, create good predictive patterns for, for why things are arranged, at least in geography, why things are spatially arranged the way they are. I will also want you to note that models are always very important to the AP course. So whenever you see a model or a theory discussed, you need to pay special attention to that because more than likely you, you will see a question on it. And I can guarantee you, you're going to see a question in some way, shape, or form on von Thunen's model. So anyway, uh, again, von Thunen's model is used to explain and predict agricultural land use patterns. Now, specifically, he is looking at European villages and European towns in the 1800s. Uh, another, thing, another thing that's important to point out, that this is going to specifically refer to commercial forms of agriculture. Now, if we're looking at subsistence forms of agriculture, the market doesn't matter. The market is not a draw for the people that are growing their food and things like that. So uh, it's only going to specifically uh, apply to those who, have, who are participating in commercial forms of agriculture. Now, before we move into Von Tuna's model, and, and I've already got it posted over here to the side so you can go ahead and kind of look at it and, and look at the different rings, it's really important to note the rings here and know where each of these particular types of agricultural practice take place. And I'll talk more about that in just a minute. So there's a couple of assumptions that are made by Von Thunen as he's looking at these agricultural land use patterns. Uh, one, and, and one of the more important ones, is that in his model there's only one market and there's only one city. Okay, so in this situation there's only one city, that means there's only one marketplace. Now what that means is that the farmers do not have options. Because if, uh, you know, based on, and, and this is something you probably see in your own life, you know, a lot of times we tend to go to wherever the closest place is. Um, and so that means if you have multiple markets and these farmers have decisions of where to send their crops to. Well, in this case, we, want, we don't want to give them options. You only give them one option of one market. That means they have to go to this particular market. Otherwise, it would throw the model off. The farmers are going to be acting in a, an economically rational way because they're seeking to maximize their profit. Um, these are not feel-good farmers who, uh, you know, who are going to make unrational decisions. And so because of that, you're going to have perfectly even planes. And so you see those uh, even circles around uh, the market. And it's the same. And this other point is really important to that uh, to that point as well. The idea that every piece of land is equally farmable and equally productive. Now what that means is that every single piece of land in this particular model is able to be farmed. And so you're not going to have any physical variation. So what we mean by that is, under these assumptions, you're not going to have a giant mountain range over here that's going to keep you from farming this piece of land. So that means that only certain parts of the, the area are farmable. You're not going to have a desert that exists over here that's going to keep you from farming over here. You're not going to have the gates of Mordor over here with Sauron and his all-seeing eye. Uh, blazing upon you as you try to uh, as he tries to recover the ring, the one ring to rule them all. So the idea here is that all of these, all this land here is equally productive, equally farm, farmable, exactly the same. There's also the assumption that there's only one form of transportation, and the reason for that is he wants to fix transportation costs and try to limit the number of a number of variables that are in the equation uh, for transporting goods from 
from the place that they're being produced to the market. So in this, von Thunen really only considers two variables. You look at the distance from the market, uh, to, from the farm to the market, which is going to, uh, which is going to increase transportation costs, and you also look at the cost of land, which is what we call land rent. Okay, and so there's this correlation uh, that the more land the farmer needs, he's going to need cheaper land, but he doesn't want to be so far out uh, that his transportation costs are going to increase. Uh, exponent, it, 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 he doesn't want his uh, transportation costs uh, to increase uh, too much and so he's only going to go so far out and so that's why you end up getting these rings because once once I've moved to this point it's no longer profitable for forestry to take place because once I move beyond here my transportation costs are going to get too high for the uh, for the air or for the particular product that I am uh, that I'm trying to raise or grow or whatever so uh, in that we, we have what's called the bid rent curve. Now you're going to see this particular curve again when you get to urban geography uh, you start looking at some of the urban models but for right now we're going to look at it in terms of uh, in terms of agriculture. So forget this term CBD central business district and think of it as the marketplace M. Okay? So the idea is the further I get away from the marketplace this is distance over here on our horizontal axis the cheaper land is going to be the closer I get to the marketplace, the more expensive land is going to be. So the more land that I need, the more expensive my production costs are going to be. So I'm going to want to try to lower my production cost by going further away, but I don't want to go so far that my transportation costs are too high. So this idea of bid rent curve, this idea of land rent is really important to Von Tunen's model. So you eventually get, again, this perfect bullseye looking thing uh, because of the even distribution of production because of uh, the, the relationship between transportation costs and land rent. Okay? And so again, it's going to start off at the market center and it's going to move out in successive rings. And what we're going to find is that the agricultural practices are going to move from, and I should have done this in reverse, they're going to move from intensive to extensive. So the more intensive the agricultural practice, the less, the less land that I need, the closer that I'm going to be to the, to the market. So the market garden, so we're talking about you know fruits and vegetables and things like that that don't need a tremendous amount of space and uh, can be grown on fairly small plots of land. Dairy farming, again we don't need as many cows uh, so we can keep those relatively close to market. Also milk is, is fairly perishable. You move out to the forestry uh, area, now we have to remember during this particular period uh, wood was actually the predominant form of energy, not coal yet, and so the forestry uh, had to be relatively close so that uh, so that the wood could be uh, driven into the market to provide energy. Then you're going to move on to the next most ex extensive form of agriculture, the grains and the field crops, cereal grains which are not as perishable uh, and can and need a lot more room and then the most extensive form of agriculture price which is ranching and livestock. And again you need a lot more land uh, and so you're going to want to lessen your, your transportation costs, but you want to, but you don't want to go so far. That's why there's a limit here. You don't want to uh, drive your transportation cost up too much. So again, the primary, the primary idea here is uh, rent and transportation costs are going to impact uh, the uh, impact the decision making on the farmer for where his farm is going to be based upon uh, the types of agriculture that he uh, that he practices. So again, and here, here's my examples, and I've already gone over these examples, so I don't know that I need to go over them again. You can look at them, check them out. Again, it's extensive versus intensive. The more intensive, the closer to the city, the more extensive, the further away from the city it is going to be. Well, that's all that we have time for today. I appreciate you stopping by and watching. I hope you found the video to be helpful, and I hope to see you next time.